All right, guys. Uh, good morning. We're gonna do uh, Julius Lucius Florus, and that's Antiquity Unveiled, page one twenty. And he was a Roman historian. That's Julius Lucius Florus, and that's F L O R U S. And here's his spirit testimony. I greet you, sir. My mortal life came to an end about A.D. 130. In the time when I lived on earth, all was confusion. Mankind was struggling for more light. The spirit of progress was strong, but it afterwards became buried beneath Christianity. To that religion, we owe the long dark night of mental slavery. This religion was in its infancy in Rome, in my day, but I can think but I think I can truly affirm from what I positively knew that not only did the man called Jesus Christ never live, but that this <clears throat> live, but this that none of his apostles, so called, were known of at Rome when I lived there. I was engaged in writing a history of the Roman emperors at the time and all sources of information were open to me, so that I could investigate all existing evidence and write a correct history of what I had taken in hand. Only a portion of my writings have been preserved and are in existence today. The reason of this was that there was three pages devoted to denouncing, devoted to denouncing the Christian religion, which were condemned and destroyed by a pope called Urban IV. I think. The Christian popes were cunning, but enough has escaped their destroying power to, to prove that their religion is founded on mythology, and that there is no so-called so revelations in the Christian scriptures that have not been taken from works annotating the time of Christ. The so-called revelation of Jesus had nothing new in it. It contains nothing that was not known to the ancients before that time, so much in relation to my mortal knowledge. I will now tell you that in the spirit life, I find that the ancient pagan idolater has a better opportunity to progress as a spirit than a bigoted and self-willed Christian. There are mil millions of Christian spirits in spirit life many of whom know that their religion is a fraud, and yet will not acknowledge it to be so. They seek to keep up that mental slavery and spirit life, which they maintain when here. The, get, the difficulty in the way of reforming these spirits is that you are constantly sending fresh additions to them to swell their ranks. So long as this state of affair continues, you must not wonder at the spiritual darkness that overshadows mankind. The enemies of truth that you meet here on the mortal plane are, no are as nothing compared to the infinite number of spirits that are contending against you on the side or that are contending against you on the side of life. But all that a true progressionist can do is to fight the good fight for truth here and then become trans translated to the spirit life as a missionary on the other side in this work you cannot fail to attain infinite happiness my name was julius lucius florus a roman historian i was in the height of my work about ad 125 so that was julius um going to refer here to Smith's Dictionary of Greek and Roman Biography for an account of Florus. We feel assured that our readers will not begrudge the space we have given to this account of Florus. The remarkable analogy existing between the spirit account of himself and the fragmentary facts which have been permitted to come down to us concerning him constitutes a most important proof of the power of spirits to return and correct the historical as well as the religious errors of the past. This communication fully confirms 
Jalbert's conjecture, which will be found in the account of Flourish, written in the Nouvelle Biographie Generale, as to the fact that but one and not three Florises wrote concerning Roman history. The name of that Florus was Julius Lucius, and not either of the names that have been attributed to him. We have another historian writing at the very time when the Christian theologians claimed that Christian scriptures were being composed, and who had access to all sources of information of that period, who declares that there was nothing then extant in relation to any man Jesus Christ or his alleged apostles. He admits that the religion after he admits that the religion that afterwards was called Christianity was then in its infancy at Rome, but its scriptures had no existence then. He says that he devoted three pages to denouncing the Christian religion, which was then taking shape, and for that reason a part of his writings were destroyed by one of the popes. He thinks by Urban the Fourth. The Roman Catholic Church authorities had much had a much better reason than that for destroying or mutilating the writings of Flores, and that was the fact that there was no reference in them to any of the events which are claimed as historical in the Holy Bible. To get rid of the damning fact that there is no historical basis for their theological fictions, the Christian priesthood have been guilty of heinous crime of destroying nearly all trace of concurrent history of the first two centuries of the Christian era. What little of it they have permitted to come down to us, they have so altered and changed as to destroy its historical value. Thanks to beneficent and all-powerful spirits, the way is rapidly opening to restore to the world the knowledge which those religious bigots thought they had forever destroyed. But precious testimony is that truly, when Florus, the Roman historian, returns from spirit life and attests the fact that religious bigotry is as rife in spirit as in mortal affairs, he speaks truly when he says that state of affairs must continue so long as we continue to manufacture religious bigots and send them to the swell the bigoted spirit and send them to swell the bigoted spirit hosts no greater curse ever scourged humanity than religious bigotry okay and that was julius lucius florus out of antiquity unveiled pages 120 up to pages 122